Hello, this is a video on making your own uh, quick change tool holders. I used to make them by hand uh, a couple years ago, but they were just so time consuming to make. Uh, so I just made about five or six and then quit after that. But now that the uh, my milling machine has a heavier duty Z axis on it, I decided to. Uh, give that a try and uh, it turned out pretty good uh, that's that's one I made by hand it's got just the straight angles on there nothing fancy uh, that was done on a South Bend uh, Model A 9 inch lathe but the new ones here <clears throat> I can put a nice radius on them the finish comes out a lot nicer and they take about half the time to do uh, that's that's a one inch body. Uh, this is a one and an eighth. Uh, this one here is a roto has a roto zip collet in it. Uh, the hardest part with that was machining the collet and the angle on the collet inside the the tool holder to, to keep my run out low. Uh, that I that I still do by hand. Even the uh, the tool holders like this, I always machine the tool holder to uh, fit the tool because sometimes these tools aren't the size the exact size they say they are. It might be a, a half a thousandth of or, or a thousandth smaller or bigger than they say it is. So to keep the run out as low as I can, I use a boring bar. And, and uh, machine it for a nice tight fit. Uh, let me see. Here's a here's a drag engraver. This is old, about two years old. It's just spring loaded. You know, it's not keyed or nothing. And there's a uh, one of those vibrating Dremel engraver bits in the end. I think they're made out of carbide, and that just just drags across your your part. Uh, this is a I'm not sure what this is yet this is going to probably be a like a boring bar or a form tool form tool holder I gotta either mill a slot in the top here or, or make a square hole in the side to uh, put some regular like lathe type tool bits in it so I'm not sure what I want to do with that yet And then there's a boring bar. This this I made a couple of years ago. It's got the same. Yeah, this was all. That was this was actually done on the CNC machine when I first uh, put it together with the round column. So this was all done on the CNC machine. And then I got a whole bunch of. Let me get this out. <laughs> Got a whole bunch of uh, drill chucks. My local uh, flea market tool guy, call him the, the local tool monger. He uh, had a bunch of these Jacob chucks. I got them for like two bucks a piece, so I pretty much cleaned him out. And uh, they're the easiest ones to make. Basically, you take a four-inch piece, machine to one end, finish it, polish it up nice, flip it around. Uh, Put it in the in the collet and then machine the other end and then just just, just cut it in half. And some of these other drill chucks I found at garage sales, uh, the rehab it store, you name it. Nobody if they don't have the key with them, nobody wants them. But the keys are easy to find. And this is a little face mill I found at the scrap yard uh, made a made the holder in the collet in for it I machined the the keys here on my fourth axis and it's I never got inserts for it so it's that thing's like two years old and never been used so someday I'll get the inserts and 
this is this is my this is my collet or my chuck I use. This is all homemade. I started out as a piece of two and a half inch round stock, pretty much machined it. Just like the tool holders. Uh, this ring here is just a it's for like holding a bearing in place on machinery or farm equipment. Uh, I got that at the farm and home center. That's the, for a two inch shaft. And then I machined the hole here to fit fit my round stock. So that, and then you just tighten up the nut, tighten up that set screw. And I had to put cut some slots in here to, to pinch my pinch my stock. So basically that that fits in the collet. You can machine the machine this end out or put another piece in or if you're just doing one or two you can just machine this, polish it up, flip it around, put that end in, and then just finish your tool that way. And the G the G code I, I was created with the uh, Mach 3 turn wizards. So the wizards I used were basically uh, I did a 20 thousandths facing pass and then for the collet end it's just a straight turn and turn and face and then for the relief here I did another facing pass but I used uh, I edited uh, the G the G0 codes to G1 so it didn't do such a hard plunge into the stock when it machined the machine that pocket out and then just a regular 45 on the end and then I always leave about three thousandths extra on the on the on this end just to uh, polish it to size and then for this end it's pretty much the same thing just a twenty thousandths facing pass clean up the end uh, this is just a regular turn with the with the radius and for the radius I had to change the, the G I think it produces it with a G G3 arc move and I had to edit that and just basically just change it to G2 and then it, it cuts it perfect and then this is just another 45 on the end and then all the all the holes are done all the tool holes are done by hand so the rest of the video will be uh, pretty much just the uh, just the machining part of it. So enjoy.